Fire away. Vin, have you ever uh, played with the Matryoshka before? I, no, I didn't know what it was, honestly. <laughs> All right. Curtis has been talking about it for about two months. We thought it was hallucinating. <laughs> it was one of those, you know, those old uh, flashbacks. Or... <laughs> Not so old. <laughs> <laughs> Then what's been the reception of the uh, elite athletes competing in this uh, first wild junior meet? I haven't seen any of the uh, elite athletes yet. They just arrived today. They are checking in in their hotels. Uh, I think when we reached out, when we reached out to them and told them about this idea, they were uh, the reception was phenomenal from all of their uh, managers. And the last two weeks, it's been really pretty exciting. I think we all know that the United States needs to host meets. The United States needs to host meets in the summertime. The United States needs to promote their own athletes. The United States needs to promote that they are the number one team in the world. And here's an opportunity on the global stage to do that. Does this mean that there might be more of these in the future? My hope is that we, we, we need to shift the paradigm. Yeah, you know, we, we have the greatest development program in the world with our high school and college programs. And then we go to a, um, and then we end up going to a professional level. We have a great team, great athletes, and the athletes all have to go to Europe. So uh, we go to um, Liège in Belgium. And I stand on the sideline and I look at the 1500 and I see the same meet I could see in Eugene. Exactly the same people, except they went, they're uh, $2,000 poorer because they paid to get over there. They're exhausted from the trip, and no one really knows who they are, and we find their performances somewhere buried in obscurity. So here's an opportunity to kind of shift that paradigm. So does that mean there's going to be more of this yes. in the future? Yes. The short answer is yes. Have you gotten much feedback from, from coaches and international coaches and international athletes over here right now that are excited to, to see this tomorrow night? I don't know. I mean, I think it's going to be up to you guys to make sure that you create the excitement. I mean, I think that it's a, it's a difficult thing to do because what happens is you have so many things happening. And uh, you, know, you have the juniors and you have all these all-comers meets, you know, the marathon, there's only so much that people can absorb. So that's always the difficulty in putting it together. But we felt that it really needed to be on, in this kind of audience for us to just put together and slap together one, one meet with seven events and um, think that people are going to come that's always a problem. So our hope is, uh, with all of this, is that we have created a one hour and 15 minutes or so meet. It's 40 minutes on the track. Um, we have some great high caliber athletes, and it's what we really need to do with the sport of track and field. We, nobody wants to go to a four or five hour event, and yet, you know, we're you know we'd run the risk here because we do have this event and this other event and this other event. But I'm hopeful that those people will stay around and watch this meet, and maybe we'll get some new people to come as well. This, this series you envision, will they all be in Eugene or what? You see, I don't know if that's really that important, Ken. I mean, I think in the end of the day, I just want to see us do, do something in the United States. Certain, certainly, despite what uh, many, of, many of our media think, I'm not focused only on Eugene. I really want to focus on the rest of the country. The whole country needs to step forward, but no, it doesn't seem anybody else is interested in doing it. So uh, until somebody steps up, this is it. And we're going to do what we can here. Hopefully we set a good model. Hopefully a place like New York City and Los Angeles. And if it sounds like I'm calling out all these major cities, I absolutely am. They all need to be stepping up. If we want the world championships in the United States, everybody's got to hold hands. If we don't want it, then just keep doing what we're doing. Do you have any uh, hope of, um, if this continues, of attracting international athletes to come from Europe to here instead of the other way around? The goal is, yes, the goal is to try, I mean, if I had to really play it out, and I don't have it all, all the pieces sorted out, but I always envisioned a, a West Coast kind of series. I mean, no one's going to come from Europe, etc., with one event. So what we need to do is do something like a landing in, um, in San Francisco. Have a meet or two at, uh, there's some school in Northern California. Is there anyone there? Yeah. Oh, Cal, oh yeah, Cal. <laughs> remember that place, John? I remember. All right. <laughs> at uh, Cal, and then we have, uh, we have great meets at Stanford, 
uh, to have a couple of meets down there, then head up and have a meet in uh, Eugene, then head up to Portland, and perhaps do another one here in Eugene, and then have people get back and fly out of San Francisco. And that's kind of where, that's the, the piece I'd like to see. Maybe Seattle could be included, but I mean, every time I fly over the country and I look at all those red things out there, it seems like we have more tracks than any place else in the world. Why don't we use them? Is this something like the Portland Track Festival could be part Absolutely. of? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's exactly what I'm looking at doing. I think that we'll have enough interest in it. We have great conditions at this time of the year. And uh, I think we just need to, we need to, we need to take, care, take a step forward and promote it. So uh, this year you've got a, sorry, you've got a break with the Diamond League, three weeks or so that there's no Diamond League meets. So it's a great opportunity for that. Would, are you talking in the future about um, athletes who wouldn't necessarily be competing in Diamond League meets, competing in the type of series that you're talking about, West Coast Series? Or? Well, we hope to get the best athletes we can possibly get. I think there's plenty of athletes, even in our own country, that would welcome an opportunity to stay at home and save, save them their travel and all that stuff. But we need to ante up with, with uh, money. I mean, this is not, I don't expect these athletes to compete for free. Right. I expect them to have to make a living and we need to step up and put some money into it. So my hope is that we'll work with the IAAF and which is part of what <clears throat> our goal is here is to see whether we can put something together, see what the viability of it is, then work with the IAAF and potentially schedule some you know, some breaks exactly like that and do it purposefully. And it's a good opportunity. We saw the, the break on the window on the window with Monaco last week and you go into the Commonwealth and uh, European Championships, this is just a great window to do this. So that's so what we did. you're not looking at any specific window really? Not right now, Sig. I think that the deal is that we'll do our best to identify where that is. There's got to be a space on the schedule for this to happen. This is, this is something which seems like a low-hanging fruit for the United States to tap into. Could it potentially be back earlier in the spring? I mean, you were instrumental in creating a lot of meets in that period? I, I guess, I mean, I, I don't know for sure. I, I don't think I would go down that road right now. I think for me, I think the place to do it is in the summertime. That's what we need to do in the summer or in the late or in the early fall. Uh, why can't we create a situation where um, you know, we've not been uh, creative enough. Why can't we uh, have a track meet that potentially we have um, an event finish at the start of the football game? You know, why could we not create a situation where when everybody's roaming into the football stadium, if we had a football stadium with a track around it anymore, uh, we could, which we wanted to do at Stanford. And I remember putting pitching the idea and what we're going to do is set the clock and run it backwards. We're trying to get three people at that time for the guys 10,000 to break 10, 29 minutes or whatever, whatever the Olympic standard is in the particular year and start it from, if it's 28 flat, start it at 28 and everybody finishes before the zero comes along. Uh, those people qualify and we pay them substantially. We had an insurance policy that was just going to give them a car. I had Bill Walsh ready to start the event. I mean, we had all sorts of great stuff planned. and. We had to bring into some problem with you can't do it with only one event. I said, yeah, sure, we'll hold up the football game <laughs> and see if we can do Speaking some of it. Football stadium. Stadium. Sorry. The track around it for the 2019 bid. Is there any consideration of a temporary track in Austin Stadium? Sure, there's consideration of all things. Uh, our plan is to, uh, if if we go forward with the rest of our with our bid process and we'll know by September 25th exactly what we're doing and um, we will have a plan that accommodates all the requirements of the IAAF, uh, 30,000 30, spectators and all the things that are accommodations, all the things that need to get done for us to be able to submit a bid to welcome the world to the United States. What's the September 25th deadline? September 25th is the day that we need to provide for the IAAF a uh, a financial guarantee. Do you ever miss uh, giving up coaching for this? For, no, I don't have enough things to keep me busy. Uh, I think there are things that, uh, of course there are things about the coaching uh, that, you know, when you get to an NCAA championships or something like that, but always my, my goal was to do something that could affect total sport and not just 
one particular area and we just needed to be at a place that wanted to do it and Oregon is the place and we've hired a fantastic coach to uh, do all those things so we're very happy that that's up and rolling and now we can concentrate on doing some other things. No. <laughs> I cannot. It's become a real strain for uh, athletes going to Europe that aren't attached. Is there some way that you can help the athletes that aren't attached yet compete at events uh, you know, in the circuit situation? Do you mean non-shoe contract athletes? Yeah. Sure. I mean, anybody who is... Um, I, our reach out is to the athletes that want to compete. We're not... We don't worry about whether they have a shoe contract or not. We provided for every athlete that came in a travel stipend. We pay for their meals. We pay for their accommodation. And we have provided prize money for the top five places in every single event. And uh, we, and those athletes had every opportunity to enter in the event. And uh, I'm reaching out to the athletes because I think they just want I believe they want a, a leadership position which allows these things to take place and um, which is trying to provide a, provide a venue for it. Then you talked about trying to get the best athletes you could to events like this high performance one. You have world class people like Harry and Jesse, but how much do you think it helps in terms of getting the momentum rolling within the community and having like Oregon alums participating like Laura and Elijah here as well? Oh, I think it's important that in this community that you know the University of Oregon is central to what we do and we have a great track team and um, as a result we have the athletes that are already here we have three major organizations the Oregon Project and um, the Bowerman Track Club and the OTC that uh, that provides a, a pool of athletes I think it's very difficult to do a one-off though it's extraordinarily difficult to ask athletes to come back from wherever they are and could be one meet for a, you know, a small amount of, of money. But if we can create this series where you can actually make a decent uh, amount of money, uh, then in fact, I think the momentum for this is great. The conditions are great. And if we ever talk, want to talk about a way that athletes are going to have name recognition in the country that they win medals for, they have to compete in the country that they win medals for, or else no one knows who they are. And it's a pity that an Ashton Eaton can walk through the airport in Portland and have no problem at all with security and yet go into uh, Brussels and need a security guard because everybody's after him for an autograph. That's crazy. It's absolutely crazy and I believe that it can easily change. How will you split the prize money up in those first five places? I can't remember the prize. I can't remember the structure of that since like 4000 or something for first place. Yeah. Total of fifty-seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That's the seven events. Every event is the same. Yeah, every the relays are a little different. I can't remember what it is. Okay. Um, but Curtis will have that information for you if, if you need it. Yes, yes. There is a record bonus if there's a uh, world best in the relay. Um, I don't know the specifics of that amount of money, but uh, I think that if I mean I think. You know, when I take a look at the list and I take a look at the hurdles, are great. Uh, you know, you take a look at the triple jump. Man, Christian Taylor coming in immediately committing. He was the first commit. He loves competing here at Hayward Field. Hopefully all is cool and he got in. And uh, he's just a great crowd pleaser. I think that at the end of the meet, we'll ask all the athletes, all of them together, to jog a victory lap. Uh, I think people will really, they will give autographs. They have committed to being around and answering any questions uh, that you guys have and we'll see if we can provide them with a, a big uh, a big connection and the end of the biggest thing for us is that when we put all these pieces together we've got something like 20 million people in this country run I don't think we have 20 million track fans and we somehow need to connect the dots between the participatory runners and those who experience a guy like Aries Merritt, uh, I mean, phenomenal athlete. Uh, these hammer throwers are great. I mean, we really tried to focus in on something they can really relate to, and you know, 1500 will be a favorite for everybody, so that'd, that'd be cool.
Thanks, okay. Hey, thanks, guys, and thanks for all your help this week.